How important is it to watch the ball? Well, it is the most important thing. Just imagine playing tennis with your eyes closed. You obviously wouldn't be able to play. So watching the ball, it is unbelievably important. And this is what you got to do. Just picture Novak Djokovic on the return of serve when he's waiting and his eyes are popping out of his head. And this is what he's doing. He's watching the ball the best that he can. And it's not only watching the ball, it's also reading the ball or what I call ball recognition. See, all high level players have a good ball recognition they need to have this or they wouldn't be playing tennis at the high level interestingly a lot of recreational players struggle with ball recognition and I often compare this to novice drivers I'll never forget the first day after I got my driver's license in Germany and by the way you have to be 18 in Germany to drive and you have to do a lot of lessons driving so you're well prepared once you hit the roads but despite that on my first day driving after i got my driver's license i pulled out of a gas station and i saw a car coming my way but i didn't recognize how fast the car was coming it was obviously coming too fast i pulled out anyway and this car had to slam the brakes full on and it stopped about a millimeter from my car and of course the more i drove the more experienced i became and this never happened again why because my recognition of traffic in general got a lot better through experience and this is how ball recognition works in tennis as well the more tennis you play the more matches you play the more different opponents you play the more you're going to be able to recognize what kind of balls are coming at you whether the ball has side spin whether it has underspin whether it's flat whether it has a lot of top spin also you're going to be able to recognize the penetration of the incoming ball possibly the most important thing when it comes to ball recognition so guys if you want to improve at tennis you got to watch that ball really well and your ball recognition will improve the more you play but today's video is not dealing with watching the ball in today's video i want to talk about what happens specifically to our eyes once we strike the ball are we supposed to leave our eyes at the contact zone once the ball has left the racket so as you guys know my channel is called intuitive tennis and there are certain elements of all strokes that are intuitive and when it comes to the contact point this is absolutely an intuitive part of any stroke and you have to put this into the context of what happens at the moment of contact the contact in tennis is over so quickly we're talking about milliseconds so it's absolutely impossible to actually see the ball come off our racket and whether our head stays in the contact zone or in other words our eyes stay focused on the contact zone after the ball has been struck solely depends on the biomechanics of each stroke and i know you're waiting to hear what happens on the forehand because you're probably already thinking about Roger Federer but you're gonna have to wait till the end because I'm gonna start with the volley so the volley is a deflective shot often struck with very little rackets movement and also it's a shot that's struck with no torso rotation so therefore our head will naturally be positioned towards the contact zone and in reality what happens often at the volley we are absorbing the ball when we're hitting a drop shot we're deflecting the ball and sometimes yes well, there's gonna be a little bit more of a larger swing but in any case because it is a much shorter stroke because it's a more deflective stroke we are going to keep our eyes at the contact zone after the ball has left the racket and in the case of the volley whether it be forehand or backhand there are going to be some instances where you actually can see the ball coming off your racket especially if you're attempting to hit a volley drop shot so on the volley it's absolutely okay to keep your eyes at the contact zone after the ball has left the racket now how about the backhand so all backhands whether it be a one-handed slice whether it be a one-handed backhand or a two-handed backhand will have a delayed torso rotation what that means is that we're going to be more closed when we make contact with the ball and because we're going to be more closed whether it's a slice or a one-hander or even a two-hander our body is positioned towards the hitting side and naturally our head is going to be positioned towards the racket and therefore it's perfectly okay to leave our eyes at the contact zone after the ball has already been struck Now all high level players will have this exact position of their head and their eyes 
on all backhands because it's very unnatural to look forward when we strike a one-handed backhand, a slice, or even a two-hander. It just simply would not happen. It would greatly take away from your stroke. Because of this delayed rotation, because we have a more sideways position of the torso at the moment of contact, it is perfectly okay to leave our eyes in the contact zone after the ball has been struck. Now, this is something that will naturally happen on the backhand side. You don't have to force this. The only way it would not happen if you would force your head to be more positioned forward at the moment of contact. But if you simply don't think about it, naturally the head is gonna be more positioned towards the hitting side. Now, can we see the contact on the backhand? Absolutely not. We cannot observe the ball hitting the string. It's just over too fast. It doesn't matter whether you're hitting a slice, a one-hander or a two-hander. The moment of contact only lasts a few milliseconds. So don't confuse this by thinking that you must try to see the ball and this might inhibit your rotation because remember, there is rotation on all these shots and this rotation has to be continuous. So don't try to force trying to see the ball after you have struck it and you might end up staying in this position and take away from the so important torso rotation, whether it be two hands, one hand, or a backhand slice. Simply observe the ball as long as you can, but then don't obsess on the contact. It will bring you absolutely nothing. As I said before, your head will naturally stay down at the moment of contact after you have struck the ball, simply because of how these three strokes on the backhand side are biomechanically designed. Now, how about to serve the fastest stroke in tennis can we see the ball obviously we cannot see the ball on the serve the contact is over in a few milliseconds it would be absolutely impossible and interestingly a lot of high level players a lot of elite level players have their eyes closed at the moment of contact and i've studied my own serve and the exact same thing happens when i make contact with the ball my eyes are closed So you're probably thinking, Nick, what are you saying? Should we serve with our eyes closed? Uh, no, you can't. You have to be able to track the ball. This is just what happens on a tennis stroke that's so fascinating. You're gonna have to watch the ball until you can't see it anymore. So on this particular serve, I'm watching the ball as long as I possibly can, but when I strike it, that impact of the ball, I think that's part of the reason why my eyes end up closing. It's over so quickly, it's absolutely impossible to actually see it. But you're gonna have to try to see the ball as long as you possibly can. Now, what about our head position? Well, here, I want you to do it naturally. I don't want you to jerk your head down at the moment of contact like this. This will uh, take away from your contact and make it more unstable. And also, don't want you to continue looking up towards the ball like this as you serve. Just let it happen naturally. What ends up happening on a serve is the following, is that when we make contact, the head will stay upright but overall the entire system once contact is made will start to go down because remember the contact is going to be made at the high level in the air and once contact is established the entire system will start to go down however the head will stay upright for a while until the racket reaches this position and when the racket starts to go down towards the left pocket it's then when the head can start going down So again, on the serve, don't obsess on trying to see the contact. This will cause problems on your serve. Try to look at the ball as long as you can. You won't be able to see it at the moment of contact. If you watch yourself in slow motion, you see that your eyes are closed or some players even look forward as they make contact. This is perfectly fine because you can't see the contact anyway. However, once you make contact, this is where you have to leave things go the natural way. Do not try to keep your head up or don't jerk your head down. Just naturally stay with the ball and accommodate the swing path. Think about it. Once that racket starts to go down, your body should go down with the racket. All right, guys, here it is. You've all been waiting for this moment. Here's the forehand. Should we keep our head down after the ball has been struck or not? Of course, Roger Federer and some other players, by the way, keep their head down once the ball has been struck and a lot of people like the way this looks and a lot of people actually get taught to do this they get taught to look through the strings for example and try to see the ball now, i got to tell you that this is humanly impossible to do the forehand is a very powerful shot and the contact only lasts a few milliseconds it is humanly impossible to actually see the ball so here's the deal on the forehand. The forehand is the most open shot in tennis. What do I mean by that? I showed you the backhand, it is a more closed shot. The serve is a completely different shot altogether. So the 
forehand is going to be the most open shot in tennis, even more open than volleys. Volleys are still hit somewhat close, so we're going to make contact with the dominant shoulder in front. Just think about the logic here. If I were going to keep my head at the moment of contact, this doesn't make sense when we're talking about the body's torso rotation. It would make a lot more sense that on the forehand, because it is such an open shot, it is struck with the dominant shoulder in front, that our head is naturally positioned forward. And as it turns out, this is how 99% of high-level players, including some of the greatest of all time, Nadal, Djokovic, Murray, have their heads facing forward at the moment of contact on their forehands. So look, just like on the serve, I want you to observe the ball as long as possible on your forehand because I don't want you to strike it clean. You can't make a contact with the eyes closed, so you're going to have to watch the ball as long as possible. But just like any other shots, as I explained today, you actually can't see the contact. This is why the vast majority of players actually have their heads looking forward. Now, why would that be? Because it makes sense in the context of the forehand. When we start the rotation is when the racket begins to drop in the back and when we hit the forward phase meaning that the butt cap is pointing forward we are already going to be somewhat open and this rotation is going to continue so that when we make contact the dominant shoulder gets ahead so it makes absolutely no sense to now try to keep our head down towards the ball so why does Federer do it then why is he looking down after the contact what is this all about well I think possibly Federer was influenced by some classic teaching methodologies, maybe by uh, some forehands from the past where the contact wasn't as far in front. See, the more further back the contact is, the more it makes sense to keep the head down at the contact point. As the modern forehand progressed and as the rotation of the torso increased, the contact was struck more out front. And then obviously, the more out front the contact is, the less sense it makes to keep looking down towards the hitting side. So my tip to you is don't try to do what Federer is doing. It obviously works for him. Federer rotates extremely well. He has maybe one of the best forehands of all time. But I've seen a lot of recreational players ruin their forehands by trying to look through the strings and keeping their head down and greatly inhibiting their torso rotation because of it. Remember, watching the ball is super important, but trying to see the ball at the contact is not so important. And what is the most important thing on the forehand is torso rotation so if you don't have torso rotation you're going to be stuck with a very inferior forehand and look guys i know that you're going to ask me about eye dominance does it matter which eye is more dominant when it comes to the things that i just described these are biomechanical elements of the strokes which have absolutely nothing to do with which eye is more dominant and to prove my point i want you to do something i want you to type in to google dominic themes forehand and what you will see there that both of his eyes are not dominant because he has them closed. Every time Dominic Thiem hits a forehand, and I'm not joking you, you gotta look it up, when he makes contact with the ball, his head is not only looking forward, but his eyes are completely closed.